Okay, what we have here is a... This is another water level pressure switch from another um, Whirlpool made machine. I think it's from a Kenmore to be exact because it's an infinite water level. And um, what I want to show you is this is going to come into play. And this is something I wanted to explain to another friend of mine, which is kind of cool. Okay, so what you notice is on the timer here, okay, this will be a little fun experiment. You see that there's an option on there that says spin. And the reason why it says that is because if someone wanted to put something soaking into the machine and just wanted to spin the water out, they, they put it to there. And then, and then it obviously, the machine goes into spin. But as you guys know, these machines, Whirlpool Direct Drive, they're supposed to do a neutral drain, which means that the tub does not spin when the, when the water is draining out of the tub. Now, the way, the way that actually works is the machine has to agitate for like a certain number of strokes uh, just about in order for the transmission to reset it for a neutral drain, which means it's all mechanical. So really, um, the spin option here is being put, was made there with the assumption that the person's going to manually put the timer on spin itself when that's the last thing the machine actually did, which is it did not agitate. So basically the way it works is the timer actually just for the most part, aside from the fill, decides what speed and what direction the motor turns. The timer itself n not, doesn't really actually decide what the transmission does. The transmission itself kind of does that. And we're gonna have a fun experiment with this water level pressure switch here to show you exactly what happens and how it all works. Just to start, um, it all st with this water level switch, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trick the machine into going into agitate, meaning I think I'm gonna make it think the tub is full. The way it actually senses that the tub is full is, I have it set to the lowest water level right now, and what it does is, um, it basically just depends on air pressure. As the tub fills, air pressure builds up in this tube here and then closes what I think you call a diaphragm in here, if I'm not mistaken. And then basically, um, once it closes, it tells the machine it's time to agitate. I'm actually gonna trick this pressure switch into thinking it's full by blowing into this tube here, if you just give a listen. Hear that? So, so, so that clicking is basically means that um, when it clicks, um, when it reaches a certain um, amount of pressure, it closes, which means that the um, switch is more or less satisfied and can let agitation begin. So I'm basically going to, what we're gonna do is, we're actually going to, these, these connectors are actually completely the same, so this will work. So we're just gonna disconnect this water level switch and connect this one electrically so I can show you the example of how it um, all comes to, to, together. I wanted to add that the way the uh, water level switch actually works, as Sharky was explaining, is actually due to the weight of the column of water. The column in this case is the uh, actual tub inside that's filled up. Uh, all of that water creates pressure on this. Now as you see the water pressure switch is way up at the top of the machine, way above the uh, top of the tub over here. So they run this hose down to almost to the bottom of the tub in there so all of that water, the weight of all that pushes more and creates more and more pressure while well, actually going this way in the hose until finally it trips the diaphragm in there that hits the switch and switches wires together here to make various things happen. Okay, so what we've done here is we disconnected this electrical connector from this from the main from the washer's regular switch. It connected it to the Kenmore one, and you can see uh, mechanical parts uh, interchangeable like that. Isn't that awesome? What's okay. also really nice about this is even though this is a variable uh, control, as Sharky showed you before, if you look at it, it's absolutely identical. In, uh, actually goes this way, like this. Yeah. Just like that. It's absolutely identical to the one that's in the machine, so inadvertently I have a spare, or I could convert this to a, uh, an infinitely variable uh, water level if I wanted to. Yeah, it's not Instead awesome. of just the five position. So really good I have that. Special thanks to uh, my buddy Nick, and uh, for giving me that. Just some junk laying around his shop, so anyway, it's here and uh, this video wouldn't be possible without them and cool stuff that we collect. 
Okay, so now what we did was I I, I disconnected the transformer to um, the washer uh, valve, so that way when I turn the machine on without satisfying the pressure switch, um, it won't fill up with water. So now um, I'll just, again, we have a longer tube held on, I'll just blow through it again. Alright, you can hear that. So then when I when I blow through and there's enough pressure, it will trick the machine into thinking it's um, it's full of water and start agitating. Now what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to show you that the way that the machine, <clears throat> excuse me, sets, sets itself up for neutral drain is that it has to agitate, like, like I said, um, a good number of strokes and then and then um, I, I can't explain it to you without giving you visuals, which unfortunately I can't do. So I'll just say that um, the transmission uh, piece moves along and just moves into a certain position after a certain number of strokes. That sound easy enough? That's the best I can give you. <laughs> so I'm going to show you that basically the way the transmission works for neutral drain is that um, all it needs to do is agitate. The timer may, has no actual control over whether the transmission neutral drains or goes directly into spin. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to turn the machine on and it won't fill up with water. Okay, you might hear the solenoid valves, um, you can see a little bit of a drip, but nothing too bad. Now I'm going to blow through this tube for a while, and if you watch, you'll see that the machine will actually start agitating. Okay, well now what I'm trying to do is, it, <laughs> got a little bit of a gurgle there. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it agitate enough strokes to, um, at least that I think will be enough to set it for drain. So we'll let it go a little bit further and then we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, <laughs> so now um, let's see what happens um, with the next part. Okay, so now with the machine off, um, we're just going to turn this timer over to spin. And if all if all was set correctly, it's on spin right now. The machine should just should go into neutral drain because it agitated for a while. So let's pull this out. Okay, it's on spin as you can see. And now we will open the lid again, and let's see what happens. <laughs> the machine successfully went into neutral and that's all it takes it just that's that's what the transmission needs when it agitates and gets a uh, good enough strokes that's it and you can see it's it's on spin but it is not spinning and just to prove what you can do is kill power to the machine exactly turn power back on and it will drop it's into true spin. That, that's all it takes the reason why the machine even stops at all with drain is because that's how it shifts itself into spin that's what the transmission has to do so without you i'm not even going to use the timer i'm just going to use the timer switch right here shut the machine off and you can see it engaged because the tub jerked forward a little bit now we're going to turn this back on and you'll see how about that? So now you know, it's all in the transmission itself. The timer has nothing to do, for the most part, with how the drain and spin function agitates. It's all in how much the, how much the transmission agitated, and then where does it go after that? Pretty cool experiment, huh? And there you have it. Shut it off. And there's some direct drive 101 for you guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and take care as always.